Does your hot rod suffer from severe rear end sag? You're not alone. This is a common problem. Millions of hot rods suffer from old, saggy leaf springs. But do you really want to spend the money on leaf springs before you buy the Chop Chop Cam? Probably not. Luckily, right out of the school of don't get it right, just get it running, there is a solution. For about 15 minutes of work and less than $50 spent, I'm going to show you how you can put some spring back in your car step. Stick around. What's up, everybody? I'm Jeremy. Welcome back to Cabbage Motorsports. Today, we're going to talk about your car sagging in the rear end. You know, these cars are 60 years old, and most of the time you get them and all kinds of stuff's been replaced in their lifetime, but somehow it seems like every project car I buy still has 60 year old springs in it. They sag, you go over bumps, they hit the bump stops. Sometimes you've got bigger than factory tires in there. You might even hit your quarter panels and you risk damaging what could be a nice car. It's probably not that nice, but I don't know you, it could be. So you know what you should do. You should go buy new leaf springs but it's not the sexiest purchase in the world. So you probably do the same thing all the other previous owners have done and you buy sexier stuff. Camshaft, intake, wheels and tires. I get it. That's where these little guys come in. This is a helper leaf spring. There's a few different models of these out there. They've been out there for a long time, but I've used this design before. It's really easy to install. It's gonna take, you know, less than half time at a football game. And with a coupon from Advance Auto, I paid, I think $39 with free shipping for these. Now for reference, these are by AutoCraft, and your part number is AC111020. These should work for just about any leaf spring. A lot of people use them on trailers, but specifically for your hot rod air cars, they've usually got two and a half inch wide leaf springs. And this is basically exactly what this is designed for. So it should bolt right on and it'll go really quickly. Now, like I said, I've used these before, but the ones I used before were made by Jegs. I went to go buy those again, and unfortunately, those are no longer in production. I don't know why. Luckily, I found these, and they look like pretty much exactly the same thing. Now, before I get in and we'll find out if this is true or not, one of the things that I saw in the reviews was a couple of people said the hardware wasn't right. So we'll just kind of have to see if that bites us too. I don't know, we'll find out as we get into it. Now, as I said, we all know that this isn't the exact right thing to do. This is right out of the school of don't get it right, just get it running. You know, you should buy new leaf springs if your leaf springs need replaced, but leaf springs, quality leaf springs anyway, are really expensive a lot of times, especially because they're so heavy that shipping kills you. So. One of the things that I would suggest is you could put these in temporarily and then when a big show runs around where somebody drives a truck and they have all kinds of leaf springs, you want to pay for shipping and you usually get a, you know, a show deal, buy your leaf springs then, save yourself some money. And then you can just take these back off and throw them on the shelf for a later project. You know, you're not losing anything necessarily. That's what I'm gonna do. These aren't destined for this car for long term. I'm gonna put them in here temporarily. When I replace the springs, I'll take them off and they'll go on the shelf and then they'll go on the next car that I buy that has saggy leaf springs like always. Uh, also really quickly, this is for leaf spring cars only. If you have a rear end that has rear coil springs, this is not going to work for you. That said, coil springs are a lot cheaper and they're generally easier to replace. There's no reason to cheap out on those because they're not that expensive in the first place. So this is specifically for leaf spring guys. All right, so first things first, the car's on the ground, all the weight's on it. Let's get a measurement so we can verify that this works. So we'll do a before and after, very simple. We'll see how much height we get out of these. I've marked a little spot on the floor so we can try to repeat this. All right, kind of going right through the center cap. The line of the quarter panel here is pretty much dead on at 23 inches. So hopefully when we put those springs in, we get something like an inch or so of lift. That'd be perfect. All right, so I got my spring down here, got my hardware, and I grabbed several tools that I think I'll need. I'll probably find out I need something I don't have. We'll burn that bridge when we get there. This is a leaf spring helper. Not a whole lot to it. You know, it's gonna clamp up like that. You got a little bracket up here that holds it. And then you're gonna bolt a U-bolt in here. Tighten it all down. The only thing you can kind of play with is there's a rivet that you can put in one spot or the other. It's supposed to provide more help depending on which uh, one you have it in. And then similarly, the further you slide it back toward the shackle, it should provide more lift that way as well. We're gonna kind of play it somewhere in the middle somewhere like that. And then I'm also gonna take a measurement, you know, just from whatever point makes sense to you. I'm gonna do it from this leaf spring shackle here. So you put them in this roughly the same distance on both sides. So you have the same amount of lift on each side. Okay, so we're just gonna throw this up there and hang it in place. Here's your little rivet. You place it in the hole. We're gonna put it in the hole that provides the most lift, which is the further one back. At this point, we can hang this in with our U-bolt. Now. I did put a little bit of anti-seize on this. Anytime you're using stainless, or this is probably cheap 
stainless or you know chrome plated hardware it tends to gall so anti-seize helps a lot on that front trust me Okay, I think that's all we're gonna do. It says to tighten these down to 75 to 78 foot-pounds, but it'd be kind of a bear to get a torque wrench in here. I did try. You can only get like one click at a time, and I just don't care that much. So we're just tightening down real hard with the wrench, and we're gonna be at least close to that number. The only thing I'll say about this, and I don't remember having this problem with the JEGS unit, is I really don't see what this rivet is doing. Maybe that's what people were talking about where they had hardware concerns. I'm not sure. I mean, it's captive. It's not going anywhere, but I also don't see that it's actively doing anything either. So anyway, that's all there is to it. We're going to do the other side and then we'll drop it down and see if we gained any height. So I made up my mind that I was going to go ahead and go all the way down to the 75 foot pound torque. That's a new one right there. I got it down to about 50 foot pounds and then all of a sudden it got looser than it should have. I thought I stripped out the bolt and it turned out this super chintzy Chineseum lock washer had just slid all the way around. So the hardware on this is not the same quality as the one that I used from JEGS before, but this is pretty easily remediable. Just go grab yourself some grade eight half inch lock washers. And I'd probably put at least one, if not two normal washers under it, because you do sort of run out of threads. It's close. You don't have to, by all means, try to roll with these. But after seeing this, I'm going to go get some grade eight lock washers real quick. This is not necessarily what I wanted to report to you guys. I really wanted to be able to say we just bolt this in. I went and got some new grade eight hardware, a couple standard washers and some hard lock washers. The bigger issue is that I don't think the rivet that they give you is correct. So this is the rivet that you get. It's a flat rivet. And I, you know, I showed you guys earlier, you kind of push it. It just doesn't seem to be touching anything, at least in the back spot. I think it would if you put it in the front position which is ultimately why I decided, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and go all the way down to 75 foot pounds like they recommend. And then we ran into the other hardware issues. But if you look at the directions, and if I go back and look at the JEGS kit, because even though it's discontinued, it is still up on their website, they both show button head rivets. So I don't think this is right. I think they're shipping these with the wrong rivet. So what I did when I went and got the rest of my hardware is I got two 5 16 grade eight button head cap screws. So I'm going to use this in place of the rivet. It doesn't actually rivet into anything, so should function the same. But we're gonna throw this in, we're gonna put a new hardware in, tighten it down, and then we'll take our final measurement. You guys may have differing reasons for wanting to do this. Most people, just because their leaf springs are saggy and they don't wanna spend you know hundreds of dollars on new leaf springs, so all of a sudden this seems like a pretty good idea. And that's the reason that I had used this in the past before too. But to give you a little bit of background on this car, I haven't even really shown this yet this is my newest project and this is a 1966 fairlane gasser uh, and this is not a low buck project so this is not going to stay in here long term but i'm doing uh engine plates in the front and you've kind of got to set your angle that your engine tapers down and i want to get that you know the angle on the body with the tilt closer to where it will actually live when I put real springs in this. And then this will probably get like Calvert single mono leaves. Now my button head here is actually touching, which is good. And I'm nowhere near the torque where they want it to be. I might not go all the way down to the 75. I might just try to get it to like 60 or something like that and live with it and see what it looks like. Both sides of the car now have our new and improved hardware store, grade eight hardware in, so we can get rid of this trash. I'm gonna try to settle the suspension a little bit and then we'll take a measurement. All right, moment of truth here. I walked around and tried to settle the suspension a little bit because if I had just dropped it down, it probably would have given us a false reading, reading too high. Also something to note, remember, this is a straight axle gasser in the front. So it's got all the weight push towards the rear that it can manage. So your mileage may vary on this. There's a good chance that you will raise your car more than I'm able to raise mine because I have that reverse rake. Here we go. Now remember we were 23 inches pretty much on the nose at first and survey says 24 and a half. So even though we had to fight the hardware a little bit, if you know that ahead of time, which you guys will and get better hardware to start with, this really is a 10 minute project 
and you're gonna raise it by at least an inch and a half. And also, remember I said if you slide it further back on the leaf spring, it should raise the car a little bit more. I've got room to play there too. So if I wanted to try to get an extra quarter or half inch out of it, I could move that further back and it might work. So that's project complete. Here's a parts list you'll need real quick. Once again, the part number to the kit is AC111020. It's made by Autocraft. And because we had hardware issues with this, I wouldn't blame you if you tried to find a different brand name. I don't know if there's another one out there. There might be. Maybe you have better luck with the hardware. If you do still want to go with that kit, because it is still pretty cheap, here's what I would do. I would go to your local hardware store. You need four grade eight lock washers for a half inch bolt. You'll need eight two per nut half inch flat washers. And to replace the rivets, if they send you flat rivets like they did with mine, 5 16 button head cap screws will work to mimic a round rivet, which is what you should have received if you get the flat rivet. That's gonna do it, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. This did work. We did get an inch and a half of lift out of a $40 kit and a few dollars worth of hardware. And hopefully, if you watch this video and then do the same thing, I save you a little bit of time and you grab the hardware ahead of time so you don't have to make a store run in between. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. We'll see you next time.